Pennzoil Synthetics with Pure Plus technology makes this the time for performance. Winter is here, but with cold start protection and excellent performance in extreme temperatures, Pennzoil Synthetics keeps your engine purring, so you'll know winter is here isn't as ominous as it sounds. Visit Pennzoil.com and make the switch today. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz Podcast. Clinton Yates, filling in here on a Friday, making your wildest dreams come true, kiddo. Got a lot going on in the sports world today. Got a couple features. Going to have a little treat for you. I'm happy about that. It included a name change, so that's exciting. But we got to talk about football. Because football takes over the globe in August. And pretty much does so all the way through till the Super Bowl. You can't ignore it. When the white guys start talking about it. That's basically what it is. And when these protests move to the point where it isn't just brothers. Well, now you've got yourself a little something. Because that's how protests work. Voice crack, by the way. There's the people who. Are otherwise. Under what they consider to be discrimination. Voicing their opinions. And then there's the, the others who can help, who can either choose to do nothing and stand on the side or choose to get involved. Chris Long has definitely chosen to get involved. Let's see what he had to say about the president, which are some rather strong words. You know, listen, right now we need leadership. Um, we need leadership in this country. We need, to, we need to come together. And if anybody really has an issue with somebody being an ally, if somebody fighting for equality in a week like this uh, against white supremacy, I think, I think that, that's sad. I don't think the president's done a good enough job of, of, of striking it down. I, I share that sentiment with a lot of people. But with or without the president's reaction, I think this is something that, as Americans, the reason I stand for the anthem is because I'm standing for, for Americans and, and, and what we can be. And, and if you looked at my hometown this weekend, as much hatred as there was, there were a lot of people of every color and creed that stood up against, against hate. And that's, and that's kind of why I'm inspired to stand for the anthem. Whoa. Chris Long dropping the white supremacy bomb. Once again, like I told y'all yesterday, anybody going to tell Chris Long sports? Certainly not to his face. He not only did that, he went even so far as to put his hand on Malcolm Jenkins' shoulder while he was protesting. Look, this is extremely important for one reason and extremely important for a second reason. The first reason being the NFL is now in a tough position. I said this before. I said this last week when I was filling in for Bomani Jones. You can't ignore this anymore, and the problem is a different one than Colin Kaepernick now. Way bigger than just one dude taking a knee. Once we get to the point where guys start scoring touchdowns and throwing up fists, the entire stick to sports world is going to melt down in unison on Sunday afternoons. We are no longer at a point where activism and athletics are separated. They're intertwined. A double helix, if you will. And Chris Long is a walking, talking example of that. Now, Long's not going to get extra credit for jumping on as an ally, but he's certainly going to get credit for being consistent about it and also putting himself out there because that's the unfortunate thing about how supremacy works. The people who otherwise would not be paying attention are more likely to pay attention to Chris Long than they are to Malcolm Jenkins. And so when we go forward through this season and we see guys doing different things, I think Long has put a lot of white players in the league, quite frankly, who probably believe themselves to be allies and or believe themselves to be woke. He's put them on alert. It'll be interesting to see if any other players like him come out. 
And by come out, I just mean say something publicly about how they feel about protests. But you got to understand it affects long personally a little differently. Being from Charlottesville, this is a little more than just cause for him. Not that he hadn't been outspoken about this stuff before. But now that this has come to his hometown in such a violent and ugly way, I'm not surprised at all he's made these comments. I'm not surprised at all by what he's done. But I bet you a lot of people are. He plays in Philly. We all know how they react when they see things they don't like on the football field. Mike Ryan, were you surprised to hear him come out and say those words, white supremacy, with such such an obvious sort of in, a, in a, such an obvious sort of manner? I know to most it might be shocking, but I'm so familiar with Chris Long's work. He's very vocal on social media. I thought it was only a matter of time before he he actually articulated that to a live mic. I think you're right. But again, we're in the preseason. Once we get into the regular season, this is going to become a much bigger issue. I am a Chris Long fan today. I was a Chris Long fan yesterday, and I'll probably be a Chris Long fan tomorrow. This is going to be one fascinating NFL season. It's not going to have anything to do with football. Because I'll tell you who's not fascinating is the Jacksonville Jaguars and that controversy, so to speak. I'm using air quotes. Top story on SportsCenter. Also, August 18th. I watched a little of that game last night, though. I was proud of myself. Why'd you I turned that? it on. Why'd you I saw my man, James, throwing terrible picks. But back to Long. It's going to be hard for a lot of people to simply understand what it means to have, frankly, a white person on your side when you are trying to fight against white supremacy. And not just a white person on your side when you're trying to fight against white supremacy, a white person who is willing to say the words white supremacy out loud. Because that's a lot of how privilege works. You don't want to believe that you are in an advantage situation. Because if there's no tangible evidence of how that works, well, then obviously it's not real. Except the problem is that it is real. And so for Long to come out and put it in such blunt terms, man, I'm, I imagine, I can't imagine what a lot of football coaches, locker rooms, and just folks in general are thinking about that, taking that home with them in Philly or wherever. I mean, the very plain image of him supporting Malcolm Jenkins. I'm looking at it now as a thumbnail on the Sports Center drop down. I mean, that's one that's going to last. That is one that is going to last. And pardon my reaction here. I just. It's one of those things where you wonder how long the fight is going to take in terms of the simple aspect of respect. And to me, this is a turning point. Not because I thought that Chris Long specifically was the guy who needed to be convinced. Of course not. But he's just prominent enough of an athlete. He's just close enough to home on this situation. And he's just well-spoken enough for people to say, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm going to have to pay attention to this. I almost think there's an advantage to a guy like him doing something like this because if it's somebody like... I don't know, a Tom Brady or an Aaron Rodgers. It's a, it's a totally different message. Coming from a guy who is an above-average player, not quite a superstar, I would say, there's a tinge of realness there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been sick all week. Deal with it. Bear with me. There's a tinge of realness there that doesn't allow people to say, ah, he's just doing this for show. Because I think if some other guy comes out, and I don't know who it would be specifically, and makes such a statement who doesn't have the history of Long, people will just turn their backs on him and say, he doesn't really believe in that. 
He's just doing that to get people off his back. That is not the case at all with Chris Long whatsoever. I'm watching this clip on SportsCenter right now on ESPN2. What a moment. I'm not going to get emotional about it, but that, to me, is a very, very important moment in this movement, air quotes, on every level. That image might live forever. I don't want to be a prisoner of a moment, but that image with Chris Long wrapping his arm around Malcolm Jenkins with the fist up, that's one of those iconic sports photos, I think. I agree. And and like I said, pardon me for getting a little choked up here beyond my physical condition. I, I hadn't looked at it. I'd read about it. I'm just seeing it now, and it's affecting me quite a bit. Chris Long, good for you. Malcolm Jenkins has obviously made an impact in that locker room. And once again, it's going to grow locker room by locker room by locker room, which means franchise by franchise by franchise, people are going to have to start paying attention in a little different of a fashion. I wonder if John Lynch would say anything to Chris Long if he was on his team. That seemed to me like football was uniting people. I agree. Don Lebatard. I had just come back from a journalism convention in Atlanta, and I was trying to get into my house. And, you know, I was penguin walking down the driveway, and I realized I couldn't find my keys anywhere. Stugatz. I don't right now have the ability, given the state of my body seizing up, to climb through a window, to break a window. I don't have, there is no time for that. What do you do? You find a public place and you do what you got to do. All right, so I went in the backyard, but this is the this is the funny part about it, visually, is there's Dan Lebetard pooping next to a mountain of journalism plaques. I got five of them. This is the Dan Lebetard show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. We're sticking with it, by the way, y'all. Race talk, race talk, bait and time, excellent. I want to credit my friend Christoph for coming up with that little ditty. It's excellent. It's going to be in the club soon. Wait for it. DJ Khaled, another one. So we talked last segment about Chris Long and his supporter Malcolm Jenkins and his protest. Let's switch sports and go to an even more high-profile franchise. Because we're sticking to sports. John Henry, who owns the Boston Red Sox, says he wants to change the name of Yawkey Way. Because Tom Yawkey was a racist. This is even more of a deal because of the United States' history with Boston. This one's not going to go over so well. I don't think. Chris Long putting his arm on his teammate's shoulder is a very different thing than the Boston Red Sox changing the name of one of the more iconic parts of their entire venue because of what could be seen as the current social climate. They were the last team to integrate Major League Baseball, if you didn't know that. And if you didn't know that, it should not shock you at all. And ever since then, Boston's relationship with black athletes has been interesting. I may be getting this wrong here. It might be my Wikipedia memory, but I'm fairly certain it was Bill Russell who said, I play for the Celtics. I don't play for Boston. And as a grown man living in America in 2017, I'll tell you, I've never been to Boston. I don't really plan to go. But I think that if the Red Sox end up changing the name of Yaki Way, Whew. Then we're looking at situations where I got to start telling my grandkids if I'm lucky enough to have children, never mind grandchildren, about the summer of 2017 and how things changed as a result. Do I think that the NFL and the MLB are going to cure racism? No, that's not what I'm saying. But you can tell me all the things you want about all the past athletes who stood up in a singular manner and did all the things they did and became famous. But this is more than just one or two players at this point. I told you all about that WNBA game I spent 100 bucks on. Before that game, the entirety of both rosters stood in unison, arms locked. To 
show love to the victims of the people in Charlottesville and so forth. This is every day now. It ain't just me. It ain't just a couple other people talking about it because they either happen to be black or happen to care. The entirety of the sports world has changed in terms of how activism is viewed as a part of what athletes do. The tide has officially turned, y'all. And it ain't going back the other way until something of substance changes in what you might call real life. There's just no way around it. I said this yesterday. If you're the type of person who's too small-minded to understand that sticking to sports is talking about this, well, then you might not like sports very much in the next five years. This notion of I tune in for things other than what some people call politics, can't get away from it now. And it's not because politically affiliated media sites are taking things over. It's because the people playing the sports themselves are finally feeling empowered enough to talk about it. Which is ultimately a good thing for us all. Because those influencers and those ideas that they spout are going to be far more influential than probably even what their teachers tell them, what their parents tell them, or what their coaches tell them. A lot of people pay attention to Chris Long and a lot of people follow the Boston Red Sox. It ain't about convincing the guy who might have yelled at Adam Jones from the outfield. It's about convincing the kid who was there and remembers all of it. And remembers when he was smart enough to learn that that's not how he wants to be when he grows up. I got to say... I don't know that I ever thought it would get this far. I thought that after Kaepernick decided to start this and after the NBA said a couple of different things, I thought we might see a situation where it just sort of petered out and it became obvious what everybody knew and everybody wanted. But this is getting bigger. It's getting larger. Quite frankly, it's getting more effective. Don Lebatard. What is happening right now with you and Bob Dylan right. is you're disrespecting everything the man has done in his career because he hasn't served you at sleepaway camp. He doesn't interact with anyone at the camp. I know, but in fact, I just learned he hasn't been to visiting day in two years. I mean, go visit your kid. Stugatz. You send your kid away for seven to eight weeks over the summer, and you get to see him or her once per summer for 24 to 48 hours. Go check out your kid. Go hang out with your kid. And the voice is overrated. The writing is fantastic. The voice is overrated. This is the Don Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Tim Kirkson is going to join us at 11, per usual. But I got to talk about something that I saw on my phone yesterday. So I buy a lot of stuff off Instagram. That's just like how I shop sometimes these days. I'll see something, I'll scroll through. And now that it's become completely and totally commercialized, you can just click a button. And it sends you right to the place to buy stuff. And you click another button, and it comes to your door. For people like me, this is real hard to lay off. But I saw something yesterday that I'm not going to say disturbed me, but certainly gave me pause. Last bet I bought, I think, was off Instagram. Or might have seen it on Instagram and then went to the web. But this product was one that really, really disturbed me now that I think about it. All right, so you know how when you've got a phone charger mic, there's like the cord, and then there's the box. The little box where if you lose the box, basically the cord is ineffective unless you have specifically a USB port or uh, a computer. Well, this product was for a box for a phone charger that also doubled as a surveillance camera. Mike Ryan, I need to know what you think about this because this notion was terrifying and they kept showing like footage from it. I mean, it was pretty high quality footage, but in the world of surveillance cameras, where does this rank to you in terms of potential invasions of privacy? 
I don't feel like that's such a convenient place, although it's just to creep out on somebody's bed, right? I mean, this particular footage was in the uh, the, the kitchen. Yeah, okay, this is just an invention to catch people cheating, right? I mean, I got to believe it. Anyway, I, I, I just, I was, I was, I was very creeped out by this and I didn't really know, didn't really know what to think of it. Anyway, here's a Sports Center update. Kevin Durant says he will not visit President Donald Trump at the White House if the NBA champion Golden State Warriors are invited. Nah, I won't do that. I don't respect who's in office right now. I don't agree with what he agrees with. So my voice is going to be heard by not doing that. That's just me personally. But if I know my guys well enough, they'll all agree with me. On to the gridiron, NFL Players Association Executive Director DeMarie Smith told the MMQB Thursday that he expects a work stoppage when the league's current collective bargaining agreement expires in 2021. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in to Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. I don't know how I feel in general about the way the state of surveillance cameras in America, though. I got a buddy who just moved into a house that's like in the burbs across the state line from my crib. And he's got one of those deals where it's like a camera on the doorbell. So every single person who walks up, there's a phone or there's an app where you can just watch that person. Do you have one of these in your home? Does anybody in the shipping container have any sort of surveillance system in their home that involves apps and cameras? I know I'm hoping to get some from the fine people over at Blink. Proud sponsor of the Dan Levitard Show with two guys. All right. Okay. But in general, what are your thoughts on these? I wish I had them, honestly. I'm afraid of them because I'm afraid that it would become my new source of, like, random entertainment. Like, I would be watching it constantly just to see who's in and around my spot on a regular basis. And I don't think that's healthy. Can you imagine what growing up would be like if your parents could watch you in your house at all times? How weird would that be? It'd be terrible. Like, I can't even imagine a situation in which that was me growing up. I was at my boy's house the other day. His wife was out of town. We were just there, chilling in the back, drinking some beers. Happened to have another buddy who lives sort of down the street. So we left his place to go to see my other friend's house. He had just moved there. So I hadn't seen it yet. We're like, all right, let's go. So we walk out on the porch. And we were waiting for the guy who lives there to lock up. And we hear, hi, guys, from the door. It's his wife who is simply watching the app because it gives them alerts every single time somebody shows up on the motion sensor. She was in California. We were in Maryland. Am I the only one that finds that super creepy? Am I on an island here? I guess so. But there's something that goes a bit further when you institute it in something as small as a phone charger that creeps me out on like an R. Kelly level. Because nobody ever looks at someone's phone charger as a potential listening device. But I did not buy one. I thought about it. But I did not buy one. If you want to know how it works, you like remove a false screen and there's an SD card inside that you can use to check and see what the footage is on it. Where would you put, Mike Ryan, your security camera if you had one in your house? Front door. Inside is what I'm saying. Inside, probably uh, bedroom. Not to creep on anything, but just to check in on my dog. I think. Ah, that's a good call. Because my dog spends most of uh, her time while we're away in that bedroom. I think mine would go on my back deck. Mainly because I would want to see if like, you know what would be a good usage for it? If you had like a bird feeder and you actually cared about watching birds, you could put a security camera on that. That'd be cool. Yeah. Back deck is great because all sorts of woodland creatures might come by. I don't know what your setup's like, but I imagine woodland creatures. I'm a Yeti sighting guy. I leave out snacks. Beef jerky for the Yeti. He comes by every once in a while. His name is Ralph, descendant of Harry. Great show, by the way. I had another friend who used his app to catch his babysitter. Babysitter. 
stealing his weed. <laughs> Not a joke. Daily he's applications a, for uh, security cams. He's a grown man. You know, he's got kids, but, you know, he partakes. And he kept noticing his stuff was missing, so he employed his app. And sure enough, one day, I wasn't with him, but you can also record on these things in some of them. And he, like, showed the footage, and I was like, wow, that's really creepy. That's what the world's coming to. Security cameras and phones. And in phone chargers. Excuse me. I can't decide if it's brilliant on top of being terrifying. Or whether or not I'm just creeped out by the idea of potentially getting hot ambushed. By someone who's got a phone charger that looks like every single else other one in the world. A little too Inspector Gadgety, Mission Impossible, E for me. And I don't love the idea of parents spying on their kids like that either. Don Libertard. This is the Nature Boy Ric Flair, 16 times your world heavyweight champion. Stugatz. The limousine riding, kiss stealing, wheeling, dealing, jet flying, son of a gun. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Boy, Dan Libertard. Woo! This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Guests on the Dan Levatar Show appear via the Shell Penzoil performance line. You can get in touch with us through the 1-800-Flowers.com Twitter feed, at Levitar Show, at Clinton Yates. Nothing makes a summer birthday or anniversary more magical than 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, when you order a dozen multicolored roses for only twenty nine ninety nine, you'll get another dozen absolutely free. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. I'll read some tweets. Never mind. They're not that good. I mentioned yesterday, you guys, the listeners of the Dan Lebertard Show, for, I've filled in on every single day part. Not every single one. Most of them. And we do a weekend show. The average number of followers per listener to the Dan Lebertard Show is lower than any other show that I've filled in for. That means you guys are great. Packing a lot of punch with a little bit of support. I've mentioned my favorite parts of the NFL season, last season, the quick top four to review. Number four, the 6-6 tie. Mike Ryan's favorite game. You're still mad about that, Mike. I'm, I'm mad at this entire list. But specifically number four, if number one trolls harder than number four, it'd be a surprise. Number three, the Vikings with a massacred Muppet set. Or no, well, I guess Muppet's a word. Muppet set all over their training facility because Mike Zimmer wanted to keep them motivated into their bye week. Number two, I forgot the guy's name already, but he plays for the Jets. He skipped his own birthday party that his team threw for him, and they Mah- benched him as a result. Muhammad Wilkerson. Muhammad Wilkerson. That was hilarious to me. And the number one moment for me of last NFL season involves friend of the show, noted firearm enthusiast, and in general, about that action individual, Akeem Tlaib. You might recall the game in which they were playing against the Oakland Raiders. They ended up winning it 24-6. Eh, through part of the game, Akeem Tlaib, who's a defensive back, got into it a little bit with one Michael Crabtree. And during one of these games, during one of these games, during one of the plays, they were mixing it up. And Akeem Tlaib went full street on Crabtree and cold snatched his chain on the field. Ripped it off his neck and ran around laughing on his own sideline. Didn't even get penalized. Mike Ryan, please tell me you enjoyed this moment as much as I did. Love that moment. Honestly, the list got a lot better after number four. Thank you. That was the idea. It's build up. I honestly thought you were going to go with uh, the uh, the Bengals um, Washington racial slurs tie game out in London. That was funny, but that was personal enough to make me mad. To me, Michael Crabtree getting his chain snatched on the field by Akeem Tlaib was the funniest thing I saw all year. It was excellent. 
it was particularly excellent because Crabtree was legit mad. Like, talked about it in the press conference, was complaining to officials. I don't know how Akeeb got away with that. And more importantly, the kind of individual you have to be to even think about chain snatching when you're on the field. I mean, that's gangster. There's just no way around that. That's mind control on another level. Not only are you not going to get these routes run, you're not going to be able to wear any jewelry when you play against me either because I just might have to bring you up off it. You never know. You ever had a chain snatch, Mike Ryan, or anybody in the shipping container? Has anyone in the shipping conta- uh, nope. container had a chain snatch? No. Nope. I, uh, I don't think anyone in the shipping container actually wears a chain. No. Roy said that was a lot of, a lot of pride, as if he's once fought off a potential chain snatcher. I don't wear chains, but I got to tell you, if you get your chain snatched, that's an automatic fight right there. You can't just oh, yeah. back down. Yeah, yeah. the, the hand's got to come out. Even if you are not in the business of throwing hands, if somebody snatches your chain, y'all got to go. It's an automatic fight. You're right, Roy. Good call. I would like to add that almost everyone, outside of Roy, oddly enough, went through a puka shell necklace phase. Oh, yeah. When is that phase in life? Middle school and, uh, for some of us, um, regrettably, sophomore year of college. Oh, oh, oh raise your who, 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 who among you? I don't want to narc on that person. No oh, self snitching. I see. Wait, I see. Damn, I just oh, did. No. What was the idea with the – what is the puka shell – like what? What is the aesthetic you're going for there? It's what, not so much a, an aesthetic as it is a way of life. It's yeah. transformative when you put on the super shell necklace. Yeah. Super chill. Name the celebrity crush you're trying to attract with the puka shell look. Well, there was a whole. Remember when Hollister took over the world? Oh, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was big into that aesthetic outside of the uh, the flip flops with the jeans. You do that, it's a problem. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're trying to you're trying to snag like the jewels of the world. No, 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 no. I'm messing with you. But seriously, I feel like in middle school, that's one of those things that both you and your significant other wear at the same time. Billy, uh, Billy actually made a great point. The, uh, the middle school phase of the Phuket Shell, that was when it was at its height. And you know who brought it back? Laguna Beach. Yeah. Ah, excellent observation. Laguna Beach, better show than the hills in my opinion. Oh, you have fired up Guillermo. What? Guillermo? Guillermo, get on here. I, hear nev- I never had any interest in watching Laguna Beach or the OC, which is kind of like fake Laguna Beach, right? Uh, like whoa, whoa, the Laguna OC, Beach. though. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, there will be no OC well slander. Uh, Laguna Beach. It's all about the hills, though. Oh, man. Okay. Big Atrina right. fan. LC. I don't know. The hills started this, it all. Justin Bobby. I mean, I don't, what did she see in him? Yeah. Like, what did Audrina see in Justin Bobby? He treated her so poorly, and she just kept going back to him over and over again. What was that about? Okay, I think I think I think we're done here. What happened to Audrina? <laughs> All the other ones they sort of creep up on your timeline occasionally, but Audrina Heidi's pregnant. Her. Heidi's Heidi. congratulations. Yeah, LC just had a baby. Wow. Oh yeah? Yeah. But what's going on with Audrina? I think Audrina may have had a baby too. Really? Roy, what's going on with Audrina? Yeah. I, I don't know what any of you are talking about right now. Audrina hosts a show on NBC, like a travel show at like no three way. in the morning. No yeah. Really? Yeah. For real? Yeah, like at wow. three in the morning. What's it called? Wow. I don't know. I saw it once. Let me find it. You got to imagine it has her name in it so they can traffic on yeah. its popularity. I don't think it does. Of course. <laughs> That's a big mistake. Yeah. I'd watch Audrina and Akeem Tlaib on a show. Good combo there. I'm all about wacky combinations of people, a la Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart. Let's see some storyboards, and we'll go pitch it to Connor. I'm here for that. Connor, I hope you're listening. Akeem and Audrina. In the morning. <laughs> Michael Crabtree got his chain snatched on the NFL field, and the person who did it didn't even get penalized. That is a lead pipe lock is my number one moment. Of the referees, the season. referees were so ill-equipped to handle any of what was going on there. Completely. You think any of those guys are familiar with the social interaction that is a chain snatch? No. They probably had no idea what happened. I'm Clint Yates, the Dan Lebertard Show on ESPN Radio. Adrena Show is called First Look. Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you are confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you the same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple. 
allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you are getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. That's rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Pennzoil Synthetics with Pure Plus Technology makes this the time for performance. Winter is here, but with cold start protection and excellent performance in extreme temperatures, Pennzoil Synthetics keeps your engine purring, so you'll know winter is here isn't as ominous as it sounds. Visit Pennzoil.com and make the switch today. Tim Kirkson joins us here. Tim, quickly, i got to ask you. I saw... The injury of Bryce Harper from a phone when I was in New Orleans eating dinner and my life flashed before my eyes and I had to leave the restaurant. What did you think when you first saw that injury in terms of where he was going to be long term? Well, it looked terrible. And I thought first thing I said was he, he'll miss the rest of the season, postseason included. But this is Bryce Harper, an incredibly strong guy. And I think well, I don't want to say he got lucky, but let's just thank goodness that this was just a, a terrible bruise rather than gigantic ligament damage. And I think he'll be back in, we're all guessing here, of course, I think he'll be back in, say, a month, uh, maybe a little less. I think if he plays everything the right way, he can be back to close to 100% by October 1st. And he's going to have to be if the Nationals are going to, do what they set out to do in the World Series. The only way they're going to do that is to get, uh, you know, Strasburg back and get Trey Turner back and mostly get Bryce Harper back. So you would say that Bryce Harper's health, as far as all three of those guys goes, is the most important over Trey and Strasburg? Well, all three of those guys are crucial. I mean, Trey Turner is absolutely a dynamic leadoff hitter when he's right. And and when you go Scherzer, Strasburg, healthy at the top of a rotation, you can match up with anyone. So I would say Harper is the most important of the three, and the other two are really important. Mm, okay. You're in Williamsport, right? Yes. So you're watching Little League Baseball. And I got to tell you, I, I, get, I get borderline emotional at this stage of my life when I watch these kids play because, you know, I was a pretty serious Little League player, and I really, really enjoyed it. And what I got to ask you is this. The vibe there in terms of – not just the players, but the people in the crowd. What is the strangest thing you've ever seen from like a non-parent or just a family member in terms of all the folks who attend these games, regionals all the way up through the World Series? Well, it's great here, Clinton. And I didn't even know because I'd never been here until 2015. And it's, it's great here. It's, it's indescribable what it's like. I just know last year some friends of mine from my hometown in Maryland they just drove up from Maryland. It's three and a half hours. They had no kids here. They don't even have kids of age that play Little League Baseball anymore. And they just came to sit on the hill and watch Little League Baseball played in this beautiful little ballpark. And you can't help but love it. I don't want to be corny about this, but this is baseball at the purest level. It's really fun to watch these kids play. And I am dazzled still by the, especially the middle infield play by some of these kids, the footwork and the hands that these kids have, especially in the middle infield, is really, really impressive. There was a situation in the regionals where a coach decided that he was going to sit a player, apparently with the player's own will, in order to try to win a game and break the participation rule. I don't know if you saw that story, but what did you think about that, considering the experiences you've had at the actual event itself? Well, I am... I am really impressed with how the coaches go about things here. Now, as far as I can tell, they are told when they get here, if not before, look, we're going to conduct ourselves the right way, and we're going to show sportsmanship and do all that stuff. And it is obvious that that's what happens here all the time. These coaches, the ones, most of them played at, at a pretty decent level, uh, really understand what this is about, especially when you get – 
to this place. And the way they take care of the kids, the way they deal with the kids is really, really impressive. And I just wish God bless all the parents out there who are coaching kids. They should watch how it's done here. That, that's the way you should do it. We're talking with Tim Kirkson here on the Dan Lebetard Show with Stu Gatz. Clinton Yates filling in here on a Friday. Uh, we had a huge, and I know this, this, this debate comes up every single summer, and we had a big discussion about it earlier in the week, which is about baseball movies. I happen to be of the opinion that The Sandlot, while a great movie, is a movie for basics. And if you're not familiar with the term basics, Tim, basically it just means for people who sort of cruise through life and their tastes are not exactly very flamboyant or uh, otherwise super, I don't know, specific. And The Sandlot's a great movie. But how do you feel about The Sandlot, number one? And number two, what do you think the best baseball movie is and what is your favorite baseball movie? Uh, I like The Sandlot. I liked it a lot. I didn't love it like others do, but I liked it a lot. And it's, it's the top five baseball movie probably ever for me. Okay. But Field of Dreams, I don't care how corny this sounds, is, will, and always will be my favorite baseball movie. This is about, that was about a father and a son. And anybody who had a dad like I did, who taught us how to play the game, taught us to have a feel for the game, taught us to love the game, that's what that movie's all about. So all I ever think about is my father when I watch that movie. So that will always be my favorite baseball movie, bar not. Okay. I'm going to ask you about one movie that I think is the best baseball movie. And some people have said it's a documentary, so it doesn't really count. That's nonsense in my opinion. Have you seen The Battered Bastards of Baseball? Uh, no, I have not. Was it really it's good? A, it's a movie that's about... Kurt Russell's father, Bing Russell, who after the Portland Beavers left in the 70s, started an independent ball club in Portland that played in whatever, the Northwest League, and they were so good that when they got to the playoffs, they were routinely basically outcompeted by big league clubs who did not want to lose to an independent squad. Now, it's a fascinating movie because it's about an independent baseball team in the 70s that nobody knew about. You know, and they were dominant, and he literally held open tryouts in order to field a team. Tim, you should check this movie out. All right. Well, I should. Thank you for that. And I'm sorry I haven't seen it up till it's now, okay. but um, now I will. Thanks to you. It's okay, Mike Ryan. I just wanted to be noted for the record that Tim Kirkjian is not as high on Sandlot as some of you people are in the shipping container. So I'm going to count that as a win for Yates, just so we're clear. Okay. Well, we disagreed, Tim, but I was a fan of your sincere apology to Clinton for not watching that documentary. It was heartfelt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My last question for you, Tim, and this comes from a friend of mine. He wants to know, since it is prime crab season, he's from Maryland, you're from Maryland, what is your favorite way to eat crab, steamed, crab cakes, soft shell, or what have you? Well, I really stink at, at crabs. Um, I didn't grow up in Baltimore. I grew up in Bethesda, Maryland. That was not crab central there. So no, I no like crab cakes the best because they're the easiest to eat. I frankly find, you know, the rest of the crab experience rather tedious getting to uh, getting to the meat and, and figuring out what you can eat and what you can't eat. I was never any good at that, but I'm not very good at a lot of things. But eating crab, I love crab, but I'm not very good at figuring it out. So give me a good crab cake like they serve in Baltimore, and I'll eat them all day. All right, I lied. Last question. What's the story that we should be most looking for coming out of Williamsport from, uh, from you since you're there? Um, well, we've got to see how good the um, international teams are because I'm told the team – I haven't seen them yet, but I'm told the team from South Korea has some enormous kids on their team, which is no surprise because every year there's one team you just look at and say, how can all these kids be 12 year old, <laughs> years old? And they are. So let's watch – the international teams, because I think we've got a better idea of the American teams and just see how big and powerful the South Korean team is. All right. He's Tim Kirkjian. He's an ESPN MLB analyst. Thank you, Tim. See you, Clinton. Mike, I just want you to know that the baseball nerd in me is so incredibly happy that I got to stump Tim Kirkjian on a film he hasn't seen about the game. That's one way to look at you loving a movie no one cares about. Yeah. And that's, the, that's basically what my life is. Me loving things that nobody else cares about. Oh, I'm so happy. You heard his take on the Sandlot, though.
Very in line with the Yatizian take. Just want the record to restate that again. It's a movie for the basics. Batter Bastards of Baseball, a movie for the sophisticated baseball mind. Don Lebatard. That movie was good, man. 300? Roy, are you disputing? Roy, I will fight you. At Levitard Show, Guillermo, was 300 good? Stugatz. I'll argue 300 is the best action movie of all time. Oh, get out of here. Fight me. Get out of here. Fight me. I'll fight you with Tango and Cash. Don't at me. This is the Dan Levitard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. I heard we have an important Audrina update, Mike. Oh, yeah, huge. Guillermo, learn them. Adrina apparently only hosted this show from 2014 to 2015. Ooh, so So there you have it. No longer the host of First Look. Well, that's too bad. Speaking of reality shows, Lonzo Ball and Ben Simmons have the top Vegas odds for NBA Rookie of the Year. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a Monster Ball family fan. I'm actively rooting for the Balls and the Kardashians to combine forces and take over the reality kingdom. This is a theory I like to refer to as the Baldashians. So if you've heard that on the airwaves, that was me. Understand that. So Lonzo Ball being up for NBA Rookie of the Year is good news to me. Because here's what I want to happen. I need... Lonzo, to set the table for my man LaMelo to become a ball who finds a way into the Kardashian clan, if you will. That's a show I'd watch every single day of the week. I need to know the shipping container's thoughts on the the Baldashians coming together as an entertainment family, being the first super blended family of Hollywood. I don't have... Any time for anybody outside of LeVar. All my attention is devoted to LeVar. I'm here for the LeVar Ball experience. The other ones aren't so interesting to me. Chris, Guillermo, Roy? I'm just tired of the uh, Kardashians. They uh, they serve no purpose to me. Hey, but what about the Ball Wow. Yeah, man. No. You're, no. You're not wow, okay. No, no. I'm with you. Okay. I love it all. Bring it all on. Th- Thank you. This does seem but like a classic Chris to to latch on now to LeVar, who's hot, and kind of like revitalize the Kardashian brand, right? Yes. This is what I'm saying. This is a smart business move. The Balls and the Kardashians joining forces. Oh. It's like Juicy J going to Taylor Gang. It'd be beautiful. And imagine if the world gets to welcome a Baldashian child. What would that kid do? You know what she'd do? She'd run for president and win. So is that how this is going to happen? Like there's going to be dating and then a baby? Like who, how does this work? How do we make it happen seamlessly? You're talking about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees? No, I'm saying like how how do we unite the two families? Well, Lonzo plays NBA basketball. And given the Kardashian history, I feel like it's already donezo. This is what I'm saying here. But Lonzo is not the guinea pig. This is all a buildup for Lamelo. I haven't quite done the math on the given what I stuff. given what I know of Lamelo and his few public um, public uh, incidents. I think he'd be down for this. You talking about him dropping end bombs on WWE broadcast? Yeah, he just it, it, the maturity level seems ripe for Kardashian fame. Oh yeah. So it's going to be like Lamelo and Kylie. Oh. How, what is their actual age difference? How old is Kylie? It's mm. a good that's question. Really she looks that's an about, info. Need that. She looks about 28, but I imagine that makes her 19. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one. That That's the matchup I, I, I could most likely see. She oh. just turned 20. I don't know. Which in Kardashian years makes her, what, 47? And he's, L- she L- just L- turned 20 and he's what, 17 L- L- or is he 16? 15. Ooh, that's a little tougher. But you never know. No, but Chloe's yeah. been dating way younger. Yeah, Courtney, Courtney. So is Courtney. That's true. That's right. Yeah. This is true. Baldashian alert. Courtney went beads? I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, Courtney did not yeah, go she beads. She never heard that. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know what they say? Once you go beads, you know, you're a dweeb. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you're a dweeb. <laughs> Please tell me the point at which you thought. <laughs> oh, man, I wish we could replay that. Once you go beebs, you never, what did you say? You're a dweeb? Uh, I'd rather not revisit that. <laughs> you jackknifed like halfway through that. It's like yeah, yeah, there, has to be, there has to be a more clever one that I can come, with, uh, come up with like during a break. But the key to this, though, is Lonzo's success in the NBA. This is why this all matters. Because, like, as much as it would be fun for these L.A. families to hook up, unless, unless Lonzo is actually a relatively good player, and I don't mean just, like, in-the-league player. I mean, he's got to have a little hardware, win a couple things. And I don't mean, like, rings. I mean, like, a dunk contest or something like that. Some random award, like the NBA Rookie of the Year. He needs that one thing where you can just say, yeah, I remember that year that he was tight. And then it all goes from there. The Paul Dashian brand. Rocket ship to the moon. Perfect situation for both parties. Caitlyn Jenner. Rocking big baller brand gear. Y'all ain't ready for that, America. Y'all aren't remotely ready for that. They're going to come together. And they're going to look like what this country looks like today. It's going to be great. How are the ratings for the Kardashians? Do they need something to sort of spice up the series? Because the balls can do that. But you know who else can do that? Mm-hmm. Now, who? bear with me. Who? O.J. Simpson. What? Oh. What? What? Wow. Now, this what? is interesting. Wow. What? The, this, is actually, this is actually quite interesting because I am rather fascinated with what O.J.'s post-jail life is going to be like. Well, we know it's OJ, a podcast. We know it involves a podcast. Yeah. Lock. Yeah. Lock. It's a podcast. Lock of the century. Yep. Super lock. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be subscription based too, because you know the juice is going to be trying to make money off this bad boy. Yep. But the thing is, is that OJ is already a Kardashian. This is the big rub with this. Like, the reason why the Kardashians exist is because of the OJ trial. They were friends. Rob Senior was his buddy. He defended him. Basically, OJ was their godfather in some in some respects. So, like, bringing OJ back is literally like your family going to get an old member out of jail. Like, that's not... I mean, that's a spice up, sure. But that's not moving outside of the box. But that actually might be more effective, Mike. You're right. Man, that's awkward. What if the juice showed up on the next season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians? What if the juice just replaced Chris and nobody addressed it? What? Sort of like on Vib. <laughs> You're bugging. Ball family, Kardashian family coming together. Two of the greatest television families in America. Joining forces as one, like Voltron, to take over the global entertainment industry. That's my dream. Don Lebatard. Deion Sanders is the best to ever do it. I think uh, we've talked to you before briefly. I don't know how. At, at one point, you had gone public saying you had a sex addiction, right? No. Okay. No. Stugats. No, that wasn't me. That was another guy. I ain't no sex addiction. I love sex just as much you love sex. You know, addiction. <laughs> you know, I'm a sexaholic or something. You want? You try to get a confession out of me? About, I go, feel like oh, I've you talked know, to you addition. about that before. No, that wasn't me. That was the other Sanders. That wasn't me. That wasn't, that wasn't me. This is the Don Lebatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. And guests on the Dan Lebatar show appear via the Shell Penzo performance line. It's time for your Sports Center update. Tony Dungy challenged Tampa's professional sports teams to help pay to move a Confederate statue from in front of a local courthouse, and they've responded. Dungy donated $5,000, and the Lightning, Rays, and Buccaneers in a joint statement said that they will donate funds as well. Former Tampa Bay Storm owner Bob Grease donated 50000 along with 1000 offered by Tampa Mayor Bob Buckhorn. The statue will be moved to a small cemetery out of town. Moving to the gridiron, 
Oakland Raiders cornerbacks John Smith was arrested Thursday and faces felony assault charges after being accused of beating his sister's boyfriend last month, Los Angeles prosecutors announced. This Sports Center is brought to you by JCPenney. Guys, get to JCPenney today for Levi's lowest prices of the season. Find select styles like Levi's 514 Straight Fit for $39.99 and 511 Slim Fit for $41.99. Deals like this won't last long. That's getting your pennies worth to JCPenney. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in to Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. The tweets are improving, y'all. At Clinton Yates, what if LeVar picks up OJ when he gets out in October and then drives to the Kardashian house? Hashtag road trip. At Clinton Yates, if you think Clinton Yates has a ghetto accent, you need to get out more. Hashtag sheltered white folks. At Clinton Yates, at Levitard Show, if born a male, the Spawn's name should be OJ Baldashian. These tweets are improving, y'all. I'm impressed. However, right now, you're familiar with Greg Cody's back in my day. You're probably also familiar with Amin El Hassan's black in my day. But we are now getting ready to launch what I call whack in my day. I'm sure you remember. Friends was all the rage for white people, but your boy was out here watching New York undercover in my so-called life long before the days that I realized Living Single was, in fact, a better show than Martin for those of us non-basics. While the girls in my history class were listening to single-digit volumes of Now That's What I Call Music, Young Yates was barreling through Ghetto Boys liner notes while trying to figure out how I could meet Nia Long. That's right, the 90s. Now the subject matter of throwback nights at college bars, birthday theme parties, CNN anthologies, and of course, fashion trends. The decade is back to tug on your heartstrings and your bank accounts, longing for items and feelings that you couldn't quite attain when they first came out. But even then, some things were celebrated that never should have been. Somehow, someway, through our rose-colored glasses of hindsight, we remember things as if they were dope, when in fact, they were not. I'm willing to give the movie industry a pass on things like The Mummy, Power Rangers, and Stephen King's It. Those are actually decent projects worth a reboot trying. I'll even grant an exception for platform sandals, which many of those same girls I mentioned earlier were wearing while trying to catch your man Clinton's eye on the basketball court. But there is one formerly celebrated trend that has legitimately ended up back in retailers' good graces for which I cannot stand. Wide leg Jinko jeans. Now, to be clear, Jinko sort of gets a bad rap overall. At the time, with their graffiti-style logo and a wider clothing line that included T-shirts and hoodies, the company itself was not the problem. They had plenty of other types of pants that were not ridiculous, completely impractical, and otherwise totally ugly. But somehow, some way, those cartoon-sized leg openings made it through the years as the one symbol of an otherwise proud era. And fair enough. The history books say, go big or go home. But let's be clear about one thing. Jinko wide leg jeans were always whack. Largely the territory of suburban kids, many of whom happen to go to school inside of cities themselves. They were a great way to say, I'm hip, I'm risky, and I can also hide any form of contraband you need, up to and including multiple 40-ounce malt liquors. Trust me, I've seen it done plenty of times. Oh, Those remind me of bell-bottoms in the 70s. Parents of those poor souls would say before dropping them off halfway down the block from the house party. Sending groans across the backseat of the family Volvo. Nothing worse than an already crappy style that also reminds old people of an either older time to make you realize that you need some new friends. If you took the train to school or rode a bike anywhere or even had to walk for more than a block or two outdoors, these were very clearly not going to work for you. I was a stalwart against them then, and now I will not stand for the abomination that is 35-inch leg openings on jeans. Because after all, when you're that kid at the party, that's all you can do anyway, is stand around because you're wearing pants that are the size of a body bag. These things in polite society have no place. And if you step in the building with those on when I'm in the spot, you can expect me and my crew to gather around and dog you and your mama at loud volume just like it was the 90s all over again. 
I'm Clinton Yates, and that was whacking my day. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. How do we feel? Chipping container. Loved it. Yeah. Met with adulation and, and praise. Yeah. Thank you. I put some work into that one. It's also a, a subject that's close to my heart. Uh oh. Tell me more. Well, I actually never wore the Jankos, but I knew several friends that did, and I could never understand why. Yeah, they made no sense. I, I get that it's not just a look, it's a lifestyle, but no thanks on that lifestyle. Shipping container? Or Jinko jeans, something you could have ever envisioned yourself wearing? I could see Chris Cody actually wearing them. I could see I, Cody. I could see Chris Cody, Cody has a pair of Jenkos. Nope. No? Wow. Roy Curveball. definitely. Roy definitely. Jenkos? Nope. Surprising. Yeah. Guillermo? No, no. You look like you would rock the, the Jenkos and the uh, the beady necklace. That's kind of like a choker, which yep. goes hand in hand. It's off I was going to say, right, there, 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 was, there are other parts of the look of rocking the super wide leg. It was also often the very small t-shirt. Yeah. If you were a girl, and very large t-shirt if you were a boy. Well, actually, no, you, you'd, you'd be surprised. Some yeah. could go tight t-shirt with the Jenko jeans if they were part of rave culture because people think Jenko sometimes just goth. Not necessarily. Sometimes no. you even got a goth raver hybrid. This is true. This is very true. That was that, that was actually probably the main intersect of people who bought those jeans. It did bring people together, the Jenkos. <laughs> <laughs> Ravers and goths. Chris Long did be wearing Jenkos in the locker room. <laughs> 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 but yes, if I'm ever lucky enough to do this again, whack in my day will continue. Because there are a lot of things that people thought were cool and got re-brought back. They were never cool, fam. You thought they were cool. We knew they weren't. 90% of people that own Jenkos had mushroom haircuts. This is true. This is very true. Man, Chris Cody just asked me if Echo was cool. Echo was very cool. I had a big e- Echo Yeah, face. Echo's got a very specific history, too. Enlighten him. Mark Echo was an artist and a graffiti artist who ended up doing a lot of different things. And his clothing line was only really just one of them. So, like, I liked Echo for, like, what it stood for. I didn't necessarily love all their clothes all the time. But they took a turn, I want to say sort of five to six years into their existence, where they became far more mainstream in pockets of people who had no idea where it started. Pockets, a curious word, because when I think Echo, I do think pockets. Good one. <laughs> for, wait, the Jinko. See the Jinkos? I mean, obviously, nothing rivals the pockets on the Jenkos. No, that's what I was going to say. Isn't, this isn't a competition. They won that. But Echo, <laughs> a, a, a very distant second place, but a second place nonetheless. This is true. And if you want to address any of the other points from Whack in My Day, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. At Clinton Yates. Somebody just tweet, tweeted me. At Clinton Yates. Living single better than Martin. Sir, please pass whatever you're smoking. Hashtag say no to drugs. Living single. Smarter? Yes. Yep. More culturally uplifting? Uplifting, certainly. Yep. I'm not going to go so far as to say funnier on a laugh-out-loud level, but funnier <laughs> not on a funnier deeper on level. A, not funnier on an LOL level. Yeah. And, for lack of a better term, more representative show of what black folks are really about. Yep. Martin. Yep. I will yep. trust you guys on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will trust you guys on that. I was a I mean, fan that's of the what character development. Great Sorry? characters. I was a fan of the character development. Great yeah. characters on Living Single. Yeah. Also, shout out New York Undercover. That dude that was in the oh, yeah. uh, the yeah. Michael Jackson. Uh, was he in the Beat It Thank or you. Bad video? I get those. He was in Beat It. He was in Beat It. I appreciate that. So yeah, don't step into my mansion acting crazy. You will get served in front of your friends and family, and I will not apologize. You know the rules. Anywho. I'm very excited about that. So thank you all for indulging. Good segment. Good segment. My another day. round? Another round. Another round. Of applause. Probably thank you, thank the you. best segment of the week, I think. I would appreciate that. That's the one I actually thought about before we did it. Don Lebatard. Is there any job in sports scarier than kick returner? 
I would put hockey goalie in the conversation. There's that sport's a lot. crazy, man. It is crazy. There are, they're skating on cr- knives. Uh, that's right. They have let's, weapons let's in their hands. This. You're absolutely right. Let's talk about this for a second. Stugats. We're going to look back in 100 years and be like, what the hell were we doing with hockey? They were skating on swords. And every once in a while, a guy got cut near the jugular. We're out here upset that they're fighting in between. Are you kidding me? Right. Fight is no. a, vi- it's a vacation. You it's a be, tropical right. vacation. You should be thankful that they're not using those swords they're skating on. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. It's time to find out what's on the menu of Buffalo Wild Wings, kiddos. Some important series in Major League Baseball this weekend include the Red Sox at the Yankees, the Indians at the Rays, the Astros at the Rangers, the Cubs at the Diamondbacks, and the Angels at the Mariners. And that's what's on the menu, brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Beer, Sports. The Dan Levitard Show on ESPN Radio. Clinton Yates filling in here on a Friday. All right, get the button ready, Mike. I tune in to ESPN Radio for sports. This is a tweet to at Clinton Yates. Not your take on jeans. Shut up. Go away. Is that guy? <laughs> Oh, that's the wrong one. It should have been this one. Let's oh, try it again because I botched. I botched the presentation. At Clinton Yates, I tune into ESPN Radio for sports. Not your take on jeans. Shut up. Go away. You don't get the show. Both apply. True. At twenty three followers. Excuse me. At Clinton Yates, twenty three followers. How about zero talent? Okay, fair. Is that guy? At Clinton Yates. Never again with Clinton Yates. Holy hell, I've never been so close to trug- chugging Drano. You don't get the show. Also, don't do that. Yes. Do not do that at all. At Clinton Yates, whack in my day, home run, frosted tips are next. Good call. Good call on that. Frosted tips, never cool. Very, very good call. At Clinton Yates, I had a mushroom cut for many years, murdered it. Different variations. However, you would not catch me dead in Jenkos. <laughs> At Clinton Yates, I can't stand how Clinton Yates always thinks he's right and his opinion's the only one that matters. What do you think we're all in this radio business for, Playboy? Lastly, maybe not lastly. At Clinton Yates, yo, I love Whack in My Day. Great, adi- great addition to the In My Day franchise. Thank you. Now we got to get to some actual opinions here. Hashtag living single is criminally underrated, smarter and funnier than Martin and friends. Correct. Hashtag, excuse me, at Clinton Yates. Come on, man. Martin was not supposed to be positive or holistic. It was post Cosby, Fresh Prince, different world, etc. You ain't got to tell me that. Martin's from the D.C. area. Shanene was an active caricature of many people who I knew and were in my family. I get that. I'm just saying. Over the years, Martin seems far more dated, in my opinion, than Living Single does. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Martin was a great show. Listen, you think a relatively loud black man screaming into a microphone as a television program isn't something that I enjoyed as a kid? What you think I'm doing right now, Playboy? All right, Clinton, you can only pick one. And okay. by picking one of these three, you erase the other two from the history books. They never Ooh, existed. Ooh, I don't like okay. this premise, but I'll take it. <laughs> well, given the time, I probably should have phrased it better. Uh, yes. <laughs> especially with what I'm about to do now. <laughs> <laughs> Getting awkward. Uh, living single, Martin, in living color. Oh. One stays. Uh, the other two erased. <sighs> That's really, really tough. That's better for a FMK segment, if you will. But um, if you know that game, uh, probably the problem with erasing and living color off the map was that it wasn't just about the sketches. It was about the fact that they had the fly girls, the fact that they actually had like, like a, a legitimately multicultural cast. That's yeah. hard for me. It captured you know the zeitgeist of the time. Yes. I can't I can't I can't pick in that situation. I, it's gotta be me. If one's gotta go, that's gotta be me. I'm out. You can erase Clinton Yates off the history books right there. I'll do that for the culture. I know many of y'all want that anyway. Because if you were race in living color, do you do you erase all the stars that came from in living color? Are yeah. you getting are you getting rid of Ace Ventura Pet Detective? Basically. Alrighty then. 
Well, then it's no, I'm not doing that. In living color, you get rid of J Lo, Rosie Perez. Yeah, I can't do that. This one's actually pretty easy. In living color, it says, "Sorry, living it's, single. <laughs> Sorry, Martin." Yeah, you know what? I might chop off both of the others and give a living and give a living color a little bit more run. At Clinton Yates, Clinton is a perfect combination of Stu's loud shamelessness and Dan's almost haughty intelligence. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. That is a compliment. I appreciate that. Actually, what did the avatar look like? I can decide. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, kid with his parents. Oh, no, right, kid comp- with his bros. Kid with his bros. Ooh. Guess how many followers? As I've told you all, Dan Levitard Show listeners on Twitter, least followers per capita of any fan base on ESPN Radio. Back Guess on how many fence. followers? Uh, 23? Ooh, a little too high. <laughs> 17. 13. Ooh. I'm going to still say compliment. Yeah, definitely a compliment. At least as far as I'm going to take it. At Clinton Yates, what about the not-so-aggressively-large bottom Jinkos? the rap rock crowd war? That's what I was talking about in Whack in My Day. New metal, baby. There were some good Jinko jeans. They just weren't those crazy wide-bottom ones. I had plenty of Jinko jeans, but they just weren't those. Quickly, where do you stand on new metal? Here for it. Right? Why not? Occasionally, one will come over the radio, and you know all the words. Look, the Jay-Z Linkin Park album was one of the best things that ever happened in my life. Tremendous combo. I'm all about that life. Simple as that. Any more tweets here? Nope. I'm Clinton Yates, the Dan Lebertard Show on ESPN Radio. If you use the letter H in the word whack, you're the feds. Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Lebertard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you are confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you the same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you are getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. That's rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states. NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Mm, all right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot of colors mm-hmm. <laughs> and shapes. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Here, why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. What if I told you some stories you need to hear to believe? It was the rivalry of the hammer and the nail, and Boston was the nail. You would hear Yankee suck at a funeral, Yankee suck at a football game. The second we said Yankee suck t-shirts, people just crowded around us and bought them as fast as we could sell them. The all-new 30 for 30 podcast. Subscribe now on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. 30 for 30 podcast is presented by Mini. We're finding the best sports stories for you right now. And to do that, we're behind the wheel of the new Mini Countryman, the biggest Mini yet. Please proceed to the highlighted round. To find great sports stories, you have to get out into the world and follow your instincts. That's where the new Mini Countryman's all-wheel drive comes in handy. With all four, we can chase down a story in the city, the country, and most places in between. No matter what story you're chasing, the new Mini Countryman will help you find it. It's available now, and so are 30 for 30 podcasts. Don Lebatard. I don't know if you actually respect Steve Aoki or not, but you came off like you didn't care for him at all. Oh, I don't. Stugatz. I don't care for his music. I don't care for what he represents. I don't care about the genre. I don't care about the young people who like that genre. I think it's offensive and blasphemous that they have replaced the true musicians that do real art throughout the world. I think he's a sham stealing money, a professional thief. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. All right, well, this is awkward. Welcome back to the show. It sounds like we lost uh, Clinton on the connection. Yeah. I feel like Shannon right now. Welcome back to the right time with Bomani Jones. <laughs> Coming up, uh, Brian Windhorse in a second. Yeah. All right, so shipping container, we got to ride with this. On hold, we have Eric from The Bachelor. Now, I would begin with 
interviewing Eric from The Bachelor, but with all due respect to Eric from The Bachelor, I don't really watch The Bachelor, so that interview would kind of stink. Yeah. Um, so you want to do it anyways? Yeah. yeah. All right. Do it. Hey, Eric. How's it going, man? Man, it's going phenomenal. I know you were planning on talking to Clinton, who's a big fan of The Bachelor, um, and you will be talking to Clinton once we get him back. Oh. Uh, I'm a producer right now, thrust into this awkward on-air position. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, what your life is like. Say it again, I'm sorry. Ah, so far, this is going <laughs> great. Right, that's great, yeah. Um, so, Clinton uh, is a huge fan of The Bachelor. Uh-huh. Tremendous fan. In fact, right. so far this week, we've had Waboom. Uh, Waboom! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we, we became familiar with Waboom. That interview wasn't great. So, expectations, not that high. you got to clear a low bar. We also had Demario, and that was better. I actually knew those two because I've only in one, I've only once in my life seen an episode of The Bachelor, and it just so happened to be a big Demario episode and a big Waboom episode. Now I know this is an awkward situation because you're being interviewed right now with someone who's not very familiar. So can you tell me what your what? life was like before The Bachelor, what you did on The Bachelor, and what your life is like now? Because when I called you, you had a manager, and, I, and, and as someone that doesn't watch The Bachelor. I'm surprised that people that are on The Bachelor have managers. So your life must be kind of crazy if you feel compelled to hire a manager. Right. What? Hold on. We're killing it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm in these hills. Service is bad. Apologize. Nah, it's all right. You're doing great. There we go. We're better. We're better. <laughs> so you can say that question one more time. I'm sorry. No, nah, I'm going to walk him in, Clinton. He can handle this. Yeah. All right, Eric. It was great I'm talking back. to you, Eric. Yeah. Sorry about that. I don't know how that went. But I'm guessing it was awkward. It was amazing. Yes. We've gotten to know each other so well. He's got a bad cell phone signal. I've got a bad connection. All right, Eric, let's get to it. Okay. Tell me what it was like dealing with Lee in the beginning of that show, considering what we found out later and the confrontation in the Mantello. Uh, I think, you know, for me in a moment, um, you know, I dealt with it as it came, but it was a little awkward because it was so left field. You know, because prior to that, we had built a relationship. I thought he was cool. He seemed genuine somewhat. And then it turned for the worse once I heard what he said about me. And so, I, you know, I had to put the tension in its place, and I handled it the way I did, and the rest is history. Now we're here talking about it, but after that moment, we didn't have that. We didn't have that awkwardness. We didn't have that tension. It was I cleared the air, so it was good. Did we lose Clint again? Is that, is that what's Hello? happening? Hey, Eric, it's Mike again. again. Hey, Eric, it's Mike again. How's it going, man? I'm going great. So how, where did you finish on The Bachelor? Say that again? Where did you finish on The Bachelor? Oh, uh, what I finished? Yeah, like yeah. My, my place? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was, what second, was your place? Second, second runner-up. Second, second runner-up? Runner oh, oh, damn, so it's understandable that you have a manager. No wonder. Yeah. Okay, that's a big deal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I have a friend that was on Survivor. He also made it to the final night. His life kind of changed because of that. So I kind, I, I can kind of get where you're coming from. And right now, it's, it's really hot around you. Are, are you getting any sort of spinoffs? I know people that finish that high. Or are you legally not allowed to talk about any potential spinoffs? Uh, I mean, I'm getting a lot of things that's that's coming at me. You know, I can't really give details. You know, a lot of opportunities that's coming. But it's all about timing and making the right decision at the right time, depending on what it is. But like I said, I can't give details. But it is life is different. I will say that life is different. Okay, it's definitely different. For me. I know you can't give details, but just on average, because I know there's a larger stuff that's probably on your plate, some mid range uh-huh. stuff. But I'm assuming maybe twenty thousand nightclubs have asked you to host a night at their establishment. <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> is that a fair guess? Uh, I would say yay. Yeah, I would say around possible. twenty thousand nightclubs. <laughs> 20,000 guys, like, OMG, we put in the universe, 20,000 nightclubs, shots out, Eric Bigger is in the building, I'm here. <laughs> so, I'm, cause I'm kind of fascinated by the whole nightclub hosting situation. Mm-hmm. What, what entails, I don't want to go too much into detail, because you probably have asking prices and there's all sorts of negotiation, but typically, what does that look like? Because I'm assuming you get a tab right? You get a blanket fee for just making an appearance. You have to pump it out on social media, right? Um, so they get the, uh, the proper promotion. And then do you have a tab? And if so, do you ball out with uh, said tab? I can't really give you a price, but I, I will say with different venues, there are different things. You know, 
one venue might be this, and another venue might be that. So every 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 place is different, depending on you know the fans, the support, how many people come out, you know who you are, you know as far as an influence. But every place is different, so everyone is not the same. Okay, but it's 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 it, 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 it's great because you know people show love and show support, and I appreciate that. You I know, get it. I'm happy okay. to have that. Okay, so we're playing the nightclub thing a little close to the vest. I get you. I get you. So you right. you made it pretty far. Uh, is it right. a game because it's life also? That's what's sort of confusing about me uh, when it comes uh, when it comes to the Bachelor. It really confuses me because you have to make a life decision. Because I feel like when you make it that far, a lot of people get caught up in the whole winning thing, and they're willing to make a life decision, like propose to somebody if they simply make it right, to the right. to the final stage. Was that something that you were ready to do? Yeah, I was ready. And I think from my perspective, it was more so my time. And I believe in timing, just like this interview. It's the right time to have this interview. Uh, but I think for me, I, I don't know how to fake something or like just go half tail. Like I'm all in or I'm not in at all. So for me, it was more so this is an opportunity. Um, it's in front of me. I'm going to take advantage of it. But I will say, I think perception based on things force people to do things and take people from doing things. So, hold on. What, what's going on? What you doing? So, so if I can um, explain it, so basically what I'm saying is that, so on the show, we talk about marriage, right? So yeah. marriage has a connotation to it, right? Yeah. Oh my God, marriage, oh, it's such a good thing. Lifelong. Right, I'm big on it. Right. My, my, but my, my, I'm big on commitment. Uh, marriage is icing on the cake. I got to be committed in the relationship. So if I make the whole thing like, okay, we get married, like, okay, but I got to be married to the relationship. You know, like, I got to be committed to you no matter what, win, lose, or draw, if, I, if you're my one, unconditionally. So I was big on the commitment part, which led into marriage. So the marriage is like, of course, but I didn't yeah. let the marriage affect my commitment to the person. If that makes sense? And I think... Kind of. So, I mean, some would argue yeah. that marriage is the ultimate commitment, but I think uh, I get what you're saying. Right. I believe, Clinton, are you back? No. No, Clinton's not back. So we'll continue this because I have several more questions. Um, Clinton texted me, and apparently um, there's – we had I mentioned that we had DeMario on the uh, the program earlier this right. week. Is there some sort of beef there? What's going on with your relationship with DeMario? Beef with me and DeMario? Yeah. What's your relationship like with DeMario? Oh, no, no, no. That's my guy. That's, that's, that's DJ. That's my guy. D Emo. No, we great. No problems with friend. DeMario? No. Who did you have problems with? I didn't really have problems with anybody. I got along with everybody. I mean, ah, you you seem like house. a very nice guy. How did you not win this yeah. thing? You know, it's like, you know, it wasn't up to me. You know, at the end of the day, I chose. I didn't get chosen. <laughs> it seems like she made the, the wrong decision. Why did she choose Brian? I just feel like that was that was, that was was her decision in the moment. Honestly, Brian was the front runner from the beginning. I mean, he had the most momentum throughout the show, so... I mean, he was always Uno. I mean, everyone knew he was going to end up in the final. I mean, it was clear, you know. So I just think they had the connection in the beginning. He got the first impression rose, and he got the last rose. So it made sense. There's a first impression rose that's just yeah, based off of essentially impression. looks? <laughs> no, based on your first you know, initiation with the person and your first meeting. So Okay, but how long is that? Uh, how, how long is that? What do you mean, how long is that? How long is, it, know, how, how long is your first impression? Do some people make a longer first impression? Do you have an allotted time? Well, it, de it depends on everybody. Every time, everybody's time is different. Some people got more time than others, depending on the time of, you know, when we were shooting. But, yeah, everybody's time is different. You know, if you have a connection, you have a connection usually it's longer than the average person because you're connected to the person. So everyone's different. Once again, we're talking to uh, Eric from The Bachelor. And uh, I'm going to ask you a very important question right now. Obviously, you didn't win. Yes. Brian won. Right. If you could do it right. over again, is there anything that you would have done differently to maybe get that final rose? No, I wouldn't have done anything different. I like you know, that. What I'm man of principle. To happen. Yeah, I don't. I don't regret anything. I don't change anything. What happened was what happened. What people saw was that was it. You know, and now we're here talking about it. You know, life's good. You were so close to marriage. Obviously, it was something that you were considering. Now that you're apart right. from the game and you have this sort of new found fame. And game is probably a little harsh. Now that you're apart from that experience, um, are you willing to jump into a commitment, as you say, because you were so close to one, or 
are you stepping back now because that's a sort of crazy world and play the field is a little harsh but step outside and maybe be single for a little bit and figure stuff out because that was kind of like a breakup right yeah, I mean, it was. It was a breakup. You know, it was a relationship, you know. that was she, We were in a relationship on the show. But I think for me, you know, as of right now, I mean, I'm focused on business and life. And um, if a relationship will organically happen, of course I'm open to it. I'm not going to say no because I believe real things happen naturally. You know, what's for me is for me. What's meant to be will be. So if that's the case in point in the moment, absolutely, I'm going to embrace it. But I'm not going to go looking for it, you know. I I'm gonna let it you. just happen, you know. I get you. I don't know why you didn't win because yeah. I just met you and I've fallen in love with you. <laughs> You're a really cool, dude. I appreciate dude. that. We're gonna go, we're gonna go from well, twenty thousand nightclub appearances to forty five thousand nightclub appearances. I firmly yeah, believe that. Yeah, I need that. you with me. You need, we we got to host together, man. We can talk about oh, this. Yeah. yeah, you've made you've gotten our first impression, Rose. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's love, man. Thank yeah. you. It's all love. All right, Eric. It was good catching <laughs> up with you. Man, I appreciate y'all. Have a great day. Peace and love. Be great. All right, you take care. Really cared about that guy. Yeah. Thank him when he's uh, while, while he's off the air. Yeah. I want to make sure that dude's okay. I think we handled that well. Not, yeah. bad, not, bad. <laughs> not terrible. Not, yeah, not terrible. Blaine Gabbard. Don Lebatard. I listened to Dan's show while I was in Florida last week, you know? I listened every day. Came in in the afternoon. He's got a good show. Still got... He's it's got a very good oh, show. Oh, it's impeccably produced. I mean, oh, goodness. That is like a... Um, like a like a training uh, uh, show for kids on how to produce radio. This is the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Perfect rejoin. By the way, if you missed any of the show, you can listen to all three hours of the Dan Lebatar show on demand in the ESPN app, plus the Miami only hour that airs before the show. And now you can subscribe to the Best of Podcast. It's all available in the Listen tab of the ESPN app. By the by, tomorrow our next top ranked. Boxing title fight is in a unification is a unification battle for the first time in over a decade between undefeated 140 pound champions. Terrence Crawford puts his WBO, WBC, and Ring Magazine world titles on the line against IBF and WBA champ Julius Indongo. The bout begins at 10 p.m. Eastern, live on ESPN and the ESPN app. That was a great bit. Some of the tweets at ES, at ESPN Radio and at Clinton Yates. ESPN is losing viewers in record numbers, and hashtag Clinton Yates is the new poster child. Tell me again how I should think and feel again. He's that guy. Thank you, sir. Scrolling through. Got some more tweets. What don't we get? Show on hashtag ESPN, not talking about sports, telling people how to think and generalizing the public's opinion. You don't get the show. Thank you, sir. I'm Clinton Yates. Filling in here on a Friday, the Dan Lebitard Show. You just got a great interview with Eric Bigger of The Bachelorette. And, of course, Mike Ryan. Interviewer extraordinaire. Oh, it's a Bachelorette. Damn. Yeah. Didn't know that. I just kept referring to it as The Bachelor. Nothing wrong with that. It's the name of the franchise. He's He's not on Paradise, at least not yet, which is unfortunate. But let's get what I really wanted to talk about. I'm I think sure we stumbled. Up, I think we stumbled upon a great new bit. Yeah, in which um, y- there's a guest on the line I know nothing about, and unknowingly I'm thrusted into interviewing them. It's a great bit. Orchestrated very well there. So thanks, Bristol. Worked out. Headline: Can more people hit a home run or dunk a basketball? I'm sure all of you all have seen this story in Deadspin, and the premise is pretty basic. If you allowed people unlimited shots, chances, if you will. To dunk a ball versus as many swings as they wanted to hit a homer. How many people do you think would be able to do one versus the other? Roy? This, conver- this conversation, hold on, has dominated my group chats for some time. And I want to know what the shipping container thinks because I'm a little torn. Mike? Start with Roy because I wasn't listening. Roy? Well, I've hit a home run in a uh, major oh, league ballpark. So okay. it was that. So, I could probably dunk a basketball. No, you no, can't. You can't. <laughs> I said probably. I said probably. I said probably. I can touch the rim. No. Oh, that is not the same. How much time do you get to train? I, I that, don't know. That was a good – I, I got to say, the confidence with the first one was solid. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what you said after. You could have said anything random, but, you know, you stepped in there with the clear reason why you wanted to talk, which I appreciate it. 
I've only gotten the warning track at a big league park. That's impressive. Especially if you went oppo. If you went oppo, that's some power. Did not go oppo. It was in BP, and I was trying to get it out and couldn't. I, I think the answer is obviously home run. Mm. Why do you I, think that? I, I've, I've almost dunked once, and I was doing plyometrics in peak physical shape. Right. I dunked the basketball once in practice in high school. That was it. Ten feet? Got a couple out in high school. Ten though, feet? Ten feet hoop? Funny, funny. Um, but, like, the thing is, is that I think the, 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 the difficulty in being able to hit a baseball, I think for most people who can do it, is hard to, to qualify for other randos. I did a promotion once. This is actually the other time I hit in a big league ballpark for the Nats, where if you got, like, if you hit a ball out of the yard, you got free season tickets. And you got to go in the clubhouse and go to the batting cages and all this other stuff. And the season ticket holders could sponsor someone to go for them. So I showed up because a buddy of mine is a season ticket holder. He was like, all right, you play baseball. I'll give it a shot. I'm sure you'll have fun. I was like, yeah, whatever. Did a story with it um, at the Post with another buddy of mine, Scott Allen, who I wrote with, who played high school baseball as well. So we did the whole thing. But, like, there were dudes there who couldn't even hit, like, couldn't connect the ball. And I was like, yo, why would you come out here in a big league park and try to hit a ball if you don't even know how to swing? And so for me, I can't even – there's no way I can tell you what the learning curve is for just being able to put the bat on the ball. And that's a huge part of it for me. But I think that probably if I, if I took a group of athletes who all played soccer – not soccer – basketball and baseball in high school and I was asked do you think more of them can dunk than can hit homers I would say more of them could dunk Chris Cody what do you think well that's people that actually played the sport so I agree with you there that people that played baseball and basketball it's probably easier to dunk but just the casual person that like is picking up like never played basketball or baseball I, I think that the Baseball is harder to do, for sure. In the well. poll right now, I love the fact that I'm referencing side polls on the show Famous for Polls. They got Homer over Dunk, 55 to 44. Yeah, I, don't know how I, feel that. I feel that the people who can dunk can hit a home run, mm-hmm. but the people Why? that can hit a home run, more likely than not, they, they don't dunk. Yeah. There, there are certain physical attributes that you need to be able to dunk. I also feel like if you played a racket or a stick sport, you could pick up hitting a baseball a little easier than you could pick up just randomly be able to hop out of the gym. If you play lacrosse or hockey or tennis or something like that, racquetball, if you will, the act of swinging something to make connection with the ball is not as hard to pick up. But then again... If you're a random track athlete, you might have some hops. You just don't necessarily use them in that way to play basketball. You're using them to leg out 400-meter and 800-meter races or whatever. Do I have time to train for this specific um, task? I mean, this sounds to me like a Dan Lebitard show team radio bit. Because if I have 30 days to train, I'm very certain I'd be able to hit a home run. But also, if I had 30 days to train and really work on plyometrics... And try really hard to get my vert because I, I can palm a basketball. The problem for me is getting up there. And if I can train my body to the point where I can get up there, I can obviously accomplish this feat. Guillermo, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. So the normal person, I mean, probably couldn't do either one of these. So do you think there are more baseball players that can dunk a basketball or basketball players that can hit a home run? Wow, Easily fantastic. baseball players that can dunk a basketball. <laughs> yeah. That's Jose, true. Jose Altuve is not thrown down. No, no. You know who could dunk a basketball? Kyle Ripken could dunk a basketball. How tall was he? Kyle Ripken used to routinely have NBA players at his house for pickup games. That's you know who was also thing. in those pickup games? Tim Kirchin. <laughs> Tim Kirchin is a baller. Can outside of the people out? that played outside of the people that played in the NBA, if you get all of the SBN together and play a pickup game, Tim Kirchin's a star. Can I just point out that it was clear that all of this was an elaborate ruse for you to just say that you could palm a basketball? Was that braggadocious? Did that come off that way? A little, a little bit. Yeah, really? Yeah, Is that something bit. that you can brag about? Yeah. I mean, what, what, what could possibly be uh, thought of positively by just saying you have huge hands? Gigantic hands. Mm. Massive hands. 
Oh. You know what they say about people with uh, big feet? What do they say? Big socks. Mm. Um, more major leaguers are dunking than ML. <laughs> Thank you. I was waiting for it. I need to know, though, amongst all of you all, who do you think would be most likely to be able to do this in the challenge? Is it you, Mike Ryan? To dunk or hit a home run or to do either? Like, I would love to see a challenge of you guys and see who could, figure, who could do what. Roy can hit a home run. We that have several established. eyewitness accounts. He used to be able to. You, well, this was established. this was long ago. Yeah, this was long pre thirty, Roy. Yeah. If, we, if we did a three point contest, I got this. Okay. Oh. If we did a strikeout contest, wait, no, Chris, you got to hit. You got to hit off of a professional baseball player, so I feel like you can jack one out. <laughs> the power's not really there anymore. Uh yeah, that's what goes first. And I feel like I would do better against like a hard pitcher. Like a BP pitch is not as easy actually to hit far as if right. you actually know how to hit like an eighty mile. Yeah, you need fastball. Chet Sedman throwing the high cheese. Yes. Like I'm more likely to hit one out if it's like a seventy nine or eighty mile an hour pitch as opposed to a batting practice toss. Guillermo could probably dunk because he was a collegiate track and field athlete. Hmm. I used to be able to dunk like uh, the little basketball because my hands I cannot. I mean, who hasn't? That doesn't count. I don't. I I, yeah. I've dunked a volleyball. Yeah, it's that's a basketball. Yeah, yeah. I mean, give me like a month and I could probably dunk if I train a little bit. Nice. You know what else they say about people with big feet? Big don't go big shoes. Small toenails. I'm Clinton Yates. It's the Dan Lebatard Show on ESPN Radio. Dan Lebatard. Never gonna stop. I am what I am, man. I'm 44 years old. I ain't changing. Stugats. Why change now? It's worked. Here I am. Sitting next to you. Filthy rich. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. I'm going to read some tweets. At Clinton Yates. After seeing this tweet, all I can think about is a Clinton Yates versus Rich Eisen head-to-head 40-yard dash. Crying emojis. I would blow Chris, 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 Rich Eisen away in a 40-yard dash. I am fully confident in that. And that's a great bit. I've seen him run it. He's quick. I'm fairly certain I could smoke Rich Eisen in a foot race. Not even, not even playing about that. Right, let's get the button ready here. At Clinton Yates, forgive me for being new to ESPN Radio and thinking that ESPN Radio would talk about sports. Hashtag stupid me. I'll just stick to hashtag Sports Center. You don't get the show. Thank you. So back to this debate. A lot of people have chimed in on this. Tweeter says, you can't get lucky and dunk. You can get lucky and hit a homer. I don't know about that. That to me is very biased in the sense of I can hit a baseball. That's a huge learning curve off top, though. Tweeter says, you can hit a home run with dumb luck and your eyes closed once. But if you can't jump, you can't jump. Okay. At Clinton Yates, you have to think about palming the ball for dunking. So you have to go with home run for random people. I don't know about I don't see how those two things really add up. At Levitard Show, I'm 5'10", played both sports and dunked, but never hit a homer. Fair enough. At Clinton Yates, do you think Serena can dunk or hit a home run? This, I need to, need, I need to know the shipping container's thoughts on. Yeesh, Serena can dunk. I think Serena can hit a jack. She can do both. Serena, my favorite athlete of all time. Don't at me. At Clinton Yates, a certain amount of height is required to dunk. Just being tall doesn't mean you have hand-eye. Very true. At Clinton Yates, I was a D2 track dude, six feet, can't palm. I could dunk in the ninth grade. I can't hit a baseball, period. That's what that's come down to. At Levitard Show, please let, please never let Clinton Yates fill in again. Hashtag he doesn't get the show. I believe you're the one who doesn't get the show at that point. You don't get the show. Last one, at Clinton Yates, one lucky swing from those same people could produce a home run. Average six-foot man, 16 to 20-inch leap, can't get lucky and jump 36 inches. That's from a guy with what used to be an egg, A.B. So I'm going to presume he's not a doctor and he just made those stats up. I need to know the story about when Roy hit a homer out of a big league park. Learn him. 
All right, it was the uh, media uh, home run challenge. Uh, I guess it was about maybe eight years ago, and it was at uh, what used to be Pro Players Stadium, Dolphin mm-hmm. Stadium. Hard Rock now. Hard Rock now. It's Hard Rock Stadium now. And I hit it over the uh, left field scoreboard. Nice. Yeah. All right. I don't think people give enough credit to how hard it is to hit a baseball. Wait a second. In your hypothetical, Clinton. Well, yes. Uh, are you hitting these home runs with um, aluminum bats or wood bats? I'll say aluminum. I don't think that's much of a difference there. Okay. All right. Well, then, Roy, I, I don't mean to disqualify what you're saying. You did use an aluminum bat. Yes, though, it was right? an aluminum bat. Yeah. I mean, come on. If you're getting played to play baseball, I, the wood bat discussion is not really part of it. Obviously, it, it changes things. Don't get it twisted. But for the purposes of randos hitting homers or dunking basketballs, I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference if Joe Blow from Kokomo is using an East End versus a Louisville Slugger. But people don't give enough credit to how hard it is to hit a baseball. Like, you don't just get in the box and all of a sudden be able to turn and connect. That's not how that works. As a matter of physical ability, I think dunking just as a concept is way easier. Put a ball to the hoop. It's sort of a two-step process. Jump, dunk. That's not what hitting is. Not remotely. Now I'm wondering if I trained for 30 days whether or not I'd be able to dunk. I might have to give this a shot. I don't think I'd be able to. I'm too lazy these days. Amongst Dan or Stu, Mike, who do you think would have a better shot at hitting a home run? Uh, well, Sugatsu is an avid golfer, yeah. but um, he's also very weak. Very oh. weak. We saw a video of Dan playing softball Boog's charity thing, yeah. and it didn't look great. Ooh, that's a good point. I'm going to still say Dan because of his size. Anybody, anybody taking Sugats here? Even though you brought a, a, an excellent counterpoint there, Guillermo. I'll take Stugatz for All fun. Right. All right. You okay. get good odds. Roy? Uh, I'll take Dan. I hope this is all for the record. Unfortunately, I do a show, The Morning Roast, with an ex-professional athlete, so this is not even a question as to who would be able to do both of these things on our squad. But I wonder if I could, I wonder if I could dunk if I tried. That might have to be my mid-year New Year's resolution. Like, I don't need to be able to do it, not that, sorry. I don't need to start doing it on January 1, but if I train now, will I be able to dunk on January the 1st? How tall are you, Clinton? 5'10". Nah, not happening. Nah, no, Fair, enough. Like, no, no. Fair enough. I could get up there. There might be some random access memories in those fast twitch muscles that, if motivated, might be able to bring things out of the doldrums. Slap a backboard or two. I filled in on Mike and Mike with Sean Farnham a couple weeks ago. He said on his birthday every year, he dunks the basketball just once, just to prove he can still do it. It's time for the club. Looking forward to it. I've never been a part of this, which means it's going to be very embarrassing for me, but I'm excited for that. Clinton Yates, the Dan Levitard Show on ESPN Radio. Dan Levitard. It's Friday. I'm getting into the weekend. I want to get my drink on. Stugatz. We've got to open up the club. Open it. Open it. Open it. Now. What is the computer buffering? There it is. This is the Dan Levitard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. The club is sponsored by the Black Tux. The BlackTux.com is your new way to rent suits and tuxedos to get free shipping plus twenty dollars off your purchase. Visit the BlackTux.com slash Dan. Open it. There we go. Mike, what do we got? Ah, oh, Clinton, you, you don't listen to the club? There's a whole setup that goes to it. Yeah, well, I'm learning. Well, we do we do this every week. It's the highlight of the week. We play uh, a bunch of sounds that sort of recap the week that was. Yas. So, Clinton, I ask you, who's the first person in the club? 
Who's the first person in the club? Pizza is for children. Ha ha! This is correct. Pizza, Pizza is, for is for children. Pizza is for children. When you go to a kid's birthday party, what are they serving? Pizza is for children. When you got to spend a long night in the newsroom, what are they serving at your little basic operation? Pizza is for children. We got to work on our timing here, Clint. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. I'll be back. So you know what you say? Who else is in the club? Who else is in the club, fam? Why do we even play? Why do we even have practice? Why, why do we compete? I mean, you guys got all the answers. That's Nick Saban from Alabama getting paid like $11 million a year. Can't seem to understand why everybody wants to pay attention to his program. There we go. I feel like we're getting better at this. Well, who else is in the club? So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, what your life is like. Say that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> a highlight. <laughs> That was the best bit of the week, by the way. So Just I want to talk to you a little pool. bit about uh, what your life is like. Say that again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Say that again, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm in these hills. Service is bad. <laughs> That's Eric Bigger from The Bachelorette. Sorry, I'm in these hills. Service calls is it. bad. The Bachelor. Yeah, that he can't be held running. against me. Considering the chaos that was, cannot be held against me. No. That is very true. Who else is in the club? I'm Clinton Yates. I'm filling in for Dan Lebitard. I'm very upset at DeMario. DeMario joined us, though. That's you. I know, but I'm saying. That, I'm, I'm just telling you. My thoughts have changed on that. Because he did join us the next day. He sort of bailed on us the first day. Talking about he had this, that, and third engagement. To be fair, to be quite honest, I thought he was lying and just didn't want to do it after agreeing to do it. But he came back and actually turned out to be pretty productive, in my opinion. Not so, as good as so, the Eric interview. Oh, yeah. No, no way. Not remotely as good. I mean, clearly, the interviewer alone was just of a much higher radio caliber. So, I mean, that, that factor itself made it a better interview. So I wanted Who to talk in the club? a little bit about uh, what your life is like. <laughs> Say that again. I'm sorry. Who else is in the club? That's me. Smacking my lips. <laughs> yes. Of course I know what it is. I do that all the time. Just to let you all know I'm going to say something important. I was listening back to the show last night, and I was like, ooh, there's a lot of lip smacking there. Hashtag lip smacking. So I'm on local radio here in D.C. all the time, and I do that like, as a point of emphasis constantly. It's a visual tick. It's like in Get Out with the woman stirring the tea. When I say that, you know that I'm about to get serious. That's a good one, Mike. I like that one. Who else is in the club? <laughs> well, that's Mina Kimes. ESPN extraordinaire. <laughs> Michael, Ryan, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm Clint Yates. A hot dog is not a sandwich. If you use the letter H in the word whack, you're the feds. Ooh, that's true, too. The Sandlot is the gap of baseball movies. Fact. So can you tell me what your life was like before The Bachelor, what you did on The Bachelor, and what your life is like now? Because when you take the bread away from a hot dog, it's still a hot dog. So far, this is going great. Right, that's great, yeah. Anyone left in the club? I stumble upon another animal called a tufted deer. It's a deer with fangs, Dan. That's a throwback. Is our other favorite friend in the club? You see what we're doing there? We've put everybody in the morning roast on, in, in the club. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. The morning roast. <laughs> That's Lucas Yancey in another bachelor, bachelor interview <laughs> gone excellent. <laughs> 
Would Waboom really get in the club, Mike, if you were the bouncer? Yeah, Waboom. Waboom and Eric, not so much to Mario. Fair enough. We've established that Eric's hosting at the nightclub that day. Ah, okay. So the bottles are all coming to him first. Yep. Problem <laughs> I'm Clint Yates. I want to thank everybody for letting me rant. Safety first, kiddos. That's what matters. It's the United States of America. Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you are confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you the same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you are getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. That's rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states. NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh... Well, uh... Honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um... Well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call Geico, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm... 